Hey y'all, it's um, dark in here. I wonder if I should, I'm gonna close these blinds real quick. Okay, that's better. Okay, Miss Hamill here. And I am gonna go over surface area of prisms and this is part one. I've decided to break this up into two parts because I wanna tackle two shapes. And I know um, from seventh grade, you did surface area with nets, and that's great. And that is a great strategy. However, in eighth grade, and I wanna draw your attention to page 511 in your book, Surface Area of Prisms, it says over here in the teaks, the, uh -oh. okay. Or some somehow I've skipped pages. Sorry, y'all. Uh, over here in the teaks, it says that uh, use. It's weird. It's like my mouse is off. Okay, you know that didn't work. <laughs> okay, use. Previous knowledge of service area and make connections to the formulas and uh, formulas of lateral and total surface area. So this, the point I'm trying to make for the last minute is we are not going to use nets. We are going to use the surface area formula and I'm going to go very slow. It's probably going to drive some of you crazy, but I'm going to explain every part of the formula so you can see how to use the formula and you don't need a net anymore to find the surface area. Uh, in this video, part one, we're only going to do rectangular prisms. Uh, and then in the next part, we'll do triangular prisms. And it says right here what shapes, rectangular prisms, triangular prisms, and cylinders. Uh, so go to the next page. And at the top, it kind of gives you the formula, pH plus 2B. And those all stand for something. And it spells it out right here uh, where P is the perimeter of the base. And in, if you have a rectangular prism, the base is gonna be a rectangle. If you have a triangular prism, the base is a triangle. But pH is the lateral area, and the lateral area is just the area around the sides. The lateral area doesn't include the bases. The lateral area, just think the lateral is the side. So if you were gonna do anything laterally, you would do the sides. And then 2B is the two bases, the top base and the bottom base. And we're gonna, okay, I can't for some reason, it's just being weird. Here's an example done for you. I'm not gonna sit here and read that out to you, but we are gonna do, I'm gonna show you these two examples at the bottom. So page 512, A and B at the bottom. And again, I might be going slow and it might drive some of you crazy. Let me move myself over here. Okay, so first, I'm going to start with the formula just so I can explain it to you. Uh, surface area is the lateral area plus two, two of the bases. So the directions say find the lateral area and the surface area. So the directions wants to do both. Lateral area is the area around the sides, and the two bases are the top and the bottom. So the way that this rectangular prism is sitting, I want you to shade in this base. This is what I'm shading in. Do you see? So one strategy that we're gonna use is we're gonna shade in our base. So go ahead and shade in your base. Now that's the base. Uh, so to find the lateral area, lateral area stands for pH. pH is lateral area. And I'm gonna explain what the lateral area is. P is the perimeter of the base. So we might wanna make a note. P is the perimeter of the base. And you might be thinking, why am I having the perimeter of the base if I want lateral area? And you'll see. So the perimeter of the base, so this rectangle that we've colored in, the perimeter would be 10 plus 3 plus 10 plus 3, because the perimeter is adding all the sides. Now, H is the height, the number we didn't use. The height would be 6. So this is pH, the perimeter times the height. 20 plus 3 plus 20 plus, I mean, 10 plus 3 plus 10 plus 3 is uh, 26 times 6. 
And if you want to multiply that out, you can. I'm just going to type it on my calculator. 26 times 6 is 156. And these are meters squared because this is area. So this is the lateral area is 156. 156 is the lateral area. Now, to find the total surface area, I need the lateral area, which I've already found. And I need to add the two bases to it. So the two bases are the top and the bottom. So 2B means 2 times area of the base, which is length times width in our case. And length and width of the base, 10 and 3. I'm not using 6 because it's not on the base. I'm just using 10 and 3. So that would be 30. 2 times 30 is 60. So that, that 60 represents the two bases, 30 on the bottom, 30 on the top. And I need to add it to 156. So I would get, uh, let's see, 216 meters squared is the total surface area. So we have the lateral area right here, lateral area. I'm sure there's a way to like, uh, I'm just gonna highlight these real quick, lateral area and total surface area. Oh, do I have options? Oh no, that's just my pen. Okay, I'm gonna change to black pen for B. Um, okay, so B is a cube. And again, to find the surface area, I need the lateral area plus twice the bases. My lateral area is P plus H. And my bases, because it's a square, is really just side squared or length times width, it doesn't matter. Ooh, got some hair. The perimeter of the base. I'm going to shade in where it's sitting. Now, because it's a cube, it really doesn't matter because all of the faces are the same. But I'm telling you to help you and strategize, you need to shade in one of the bases. And the perimeter of this base would be 11 on each side because it's a cube. So 11 times 4 is 44. That's the perimeter of the base. Perimeter of the base. Make sure you write that down somewhere. I wrote it here. Perimeter of the base times the height. Well, the height is also 11 because it's a cube, so it's all the same. Two, and then side squared would be 11 squared. Uh, 44 times 11, 484 is the lateral area. It's kind of like a delay. 484 millimeters squared is the lateral area. Um, 2 times 11 squared, 11 squared is 121. Uh, 121 times 2, so that's going to be 242. I don't know why I just typed that in. 242 plus 484 is 6, 12, 7, 26 maybe? Let me just double check. So the total surface area is 726 millimeters squared. So I have my lateral area. In my surface area. Again, I'm using the formula for lateral area and the bases and I'm putting them together. And I know you're probably like, okay, I get it, I get it. But I'm just like out of experience, I've taught eighth grade math many years out of experience. This can be a tricky thing for students to get. Okay, um, I'm going to exit out of this and I think there's another example for us to do. I don't want to save this. Okay, flip the next page. There's a multi-step problem. There's a multi-step problem that was done for you and all of it's worked out. Uh, so we're just gonna go to got it C because I don't, I don't need to read that. You can read that if you would like. Uh, so I'm just gonna cut C out. Okay. And this is multi-step, so it sounds like it's got a, a lot of different parts. Um, I'm going to go back to the blue pen because I like the blue pen better, personally. Uh, the largest corrugated, I don't know what that means, cardboard box ever constructed measures about 23 feet long, 9 feet high, and 8 feet wide. Would 950 square feet of paper be enough to cover the box? Justify your answer. So we're talking about covering the box, circle the word cover. So we need to find the total surface area. It's not just asking about the lateral area, it's asking about the total surface area. Uh, now, if you need to draw a box, okay, let me show you how I draw a 3D box. I draw a rectangle. 
And then from the top corners, I kind of go diagonal, diagonal, and I try to do them kind of the same length, and then I connect them across. And then from this corner, the, the right corner, I just go straight down, and then I connect it right there. So I just think that's like the neatest way so you don't have a bunch of, I know people will do this and then do another box and then they connect all the corners. Like there's nothing wrong with that, but then you have a lot of extra lines that I don't really like. So it's 23 feet long, nine feet high and eight feet wide. So I have my length, my width and my height and I wanna find the surface area. So it's the lateral area plus two of the bases pH plus two, the base area is length times width. Now I'm just gonna put my numbers in, the perimeter of the base. So again, I'm gonna kind of shade in the base so you see the perimeter of the base. We would need to do 23 plus eight, let's see, that's 11, 31 times two, so 62 times the height of the prism is nine. The height of the prism is nine plus two, and then the length is 23 times eight. I've only used nine once. If you look at my formula, I use 23 and eight here, and I use 23 and eight here. I only use nine once, and so that should be, you shouldn't be using the height very much. Um, 62 times nine, I'm just typing everything in, two parentheses, 23 times eight, so the total surface area of this corrugated cardboard box, if you know what that means, please let me know, 926 feet squared. So that is the total surface area. Now the question is asking us, if we have 950, would that be enough to cover the box? And what do you think? The box surface area is 926, but we have 950. So 926 is less than 950. So the answer is yes, we do have enough and where it says justify, this, whoops, that is your justification because we've shown that the amount that we need is less than what we have. And so that's how you justify it. But that's a multi-step multi problem, which you will have more of. But anyway, the surface area of a rectangular prism using the formula, I showed you three examples. I know that I went really slow, but just trust me on this, that the, be the, the better you get it now, it's just gonna make so much more sense when we do triangular prisms. Um, all right, see you soon. Oops, totally. Here it is. Hmm.